And now, welcome everybody. If you're just joining us on the YouTube show, because this is where the YouTube version of the show just began, you you actually uh, missed the very first part of the show in which Lou Sander uh, had a pretty dark confession that he made uh, regarding bacon. And if you want to see it, you're going to want to like the Liberty Principle Facebook page and go back and listen to the very beginning where you will listen to Lou Sander with a rather a touching, a moving, somewhat dark uh, confession about bacon. And I don't want to spoil it. And I don't think you should. I think you should just let the YouTube audience discover that for themselves. So welcome to the show. How are you doing? I am doing well. How are you doing? Wow. <laughs> I didn't expect that reaction. <laughs> I expected something much more acerbic in response. <laughs> I did not expect like a weird Teletubby kind of response. I am doing very fine. How are you doing? <laughs> so how's your beard, by the way? I'm always asking about the my, beard. My beard is doing well. It, it's very happy. Uh, it traveled with me. So it did. It's, it's getting around. Did you guys take turns driving or did you drive the whole time? Oh, I flew. Oh, you flew. Oh, whoa, Mr. Fancy Pants. What what do you do for a living? You're just flying anywhere you want? Just, you know, you don't want to go see someone? You just hop on a plane and go to North Carolina? Just in North Carolina, is that where you said? Yes. Yeah, so you just hop on a plane and, wow, must be nice. You're like the 1%. I didn't realize that. We're all the 1% now. <laughs> well, if you live in America, actually, it, you are part of the 1%. See? That's Pretty much, where the real yeah. Burn comes in, yeah. So we, we got a we got an interesting show. We're going to we're going to cover our top story, but then we're going to go into something unscheduled. And I don't want to say what it is, uh, but I think the top story kind of sets it up here. Did you did you have a plan or a, a time to to look over the the top story there? Have you taken in the full glory of the wonderful story that we're about to cover? A little bit, yes. I, I am familiar with this particular story here, so... So I'll hit the bump, yeah. and we'll get to it. Yeah, here comes bump the it, bump. bump it, bump it, bump, 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 So you know bump, where we start. Bump. We start shorter, shorter leash. Our coercive association shortening the leash on their pets. We cover stories of the state, the government, the coercive enterprise, the coercive association plotting to or succeeding in shortening the leash on those they presume to rule. Welcome to a shorter leash. I think we have a beautiful story here, and it's where we get the title for the show today. And the title for the show is, Have You Visited Your State Porn Site Today? Well, if you live in Rhode Island, you're going to have that chance pretty soon. So I'm, I'm going to start relating the story. And you interrupt me as you usually do. How's that? Sounds like a I can handle that. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> Although, if it was the other way around, I'd be interrupting you. So, no problem. We interrupt each other. It's what we do. It's a thing. It's a thing. So Yeah, shut uh, up and do the story. <laughs> right. So, Rhode Island appears. Now. Do it. Do it now. <laughs> I'm feeling like I'm going to go <laughs> fetal here. <laughs> I don't know if I can take it. I'm going to. I'm going to rise above this. So Rhode Island appears to, uh, I'm, 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 I'm count, I'm count, I'm, how, I'm coloring it this, this way. And I think I'm more accurate in how I'm depicting this. They, they, they appear to want to get into the poor bu porn business. So now if you ask them, they'll laugh at you. They'll say, dude, dude, we're not getting into porn business, man. All we're, all we're, all we're doing is, you know, we have this new bill. It's, you know, it's going through the state legislature. It looks like it has a good chance of pause passing. And it's, uh, you know, it's going to require residents of Rhode Island to pay a $20 fee to unlock their computers and allow them to view porn. No biggie. You know, that's, that's now I don't know if it's $20. Is it $20 monthly? Is it $20 yearly? I, I, I don't know. Is it like a one-time fee? It's probably not a one-time fee. I don't know how often government ever has a one-time fee. I think the only one-time fee that you have from the government is a death tax. <laughs> yeah, can you think of any other one-time fees? Hmm. One-time fees per day. Right. That, though that's true. But, but they're all about the recurring. 
it's a thing. It's it's a good revenue plan. You don't want the one times. You want the recurrings. So now I know a lot of you folks because there was similar type legislation that's being proposed in Wyoming. You know, Wyoming, it's going a little schizophrenic. On one hand, it's like, hey, we want to be the bastion for the blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Hey, we want to monitor your porn. You know, one of those two probably doesn't match with the other. But Wyoming, predominantly Republican, conservative, you know, Christian, conservative. But no, that's not Rhode Island. Rhode Island is overwhelmingly Democrat. Seriously, overwhelmingly Democrat. The bill is by uh, two uh, Democrat state senators. You have Frank, I'm not an arrogant prick who, th I, I am an arrogant prick who thinks I should get a cut of that porn cash saccone, and his partner in crime, Democratic Senator Hannah. I, I think I should be able to know who exactly is watching porn and, and they should pay me to do it gallo. These are Democrats. So it's so it's Democrats that are doing this. Let me ask you, I'm couching this as this is a porn business. Rhode Island is now going into the porn business. Tell me where I'm wrong. You know, change my You're mind. Not, you are not wrong at all. As a matter of fact, I agree with you 100% on this, and I support it. You support, I support it. The mm -hmm. nationalization, as you said, this is your I, line. I, I, support, I support the nationalization of the porn industry. Do you know why? I'm... I'm waiting for the punchline. <laughs> because I can't, I can't wait for all the anti-discrimination laws and the Americans with Disabilities Act to get implemented in this particular industry so that I don't have to look real hard to find my fetishes. <laughs> they, they, they'll be right they're there. It'll, it'll, it'll be mainstream. Hey, you like old ones? Great. No age discrimination in the government porn industry. That's true. That's absolutely true. That's I, I hadn't thought about it that way. So, it, it, and, the, it, and the reason being is I, I was in a hotel the other night because I, I had a weather delay, and I, I went to the front desk, and I says, you know what? I'd like the pornography in my room disabled. And she says, look, you sick bastard. You take the regular porn like everybody else gets. <laughs> yeah. What are you, an anarchist? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, I don't know. I guess yeah. turn but, it down but, the government. But, but seriously, but seriously, if, if if they get too crazy in in messing around with the porn industry, uh, the one thing that we know from prohibition is that when government interferes too much, people just make their own porn in the bathtub, and and it's usually harder and deadlier. So yes, it's and porn you can go that blind will kill. Too. What's that? You can go blind too. <laughs> Oh, you'll go blind faster, and it'll kill you, and you'll yes. die happy though. So what's yes? No harm, no foul. <laughs> well, not not, what's, not not much. At not least. much, really. Not so, much harm, not much foul. So for me, this is a story which, I mean, you've been. Uh, on the other side, so to speak. You've been outside of the coercive enterprise paradigm much longer than I have. So let me ask you, how regularly, if at all, do you go through this, I can't believe that I live amongst people who actually look at stuff like this and think it's normal? That, that they're not looking at this and thinking, holy crap, where are the pitchforks and the torches? Well, you figure if the, the torches and pitchforks were going to come out, they would have come out a long time ago. Uh, back on one of the older versions of the Freedom Fiends, one of the original hosts had made the comment of, if the Fond du Lac Fathers were alive today, they would have shot an RPG through somebody's window by now. Who was that ancient fiend? Uh, I can't remember exactly which one it was, Michael. <laughs> it, it, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and yeah, it, it, he has a point, but, but how do you, did you before, do you now go through, I seem to be going about every two to three months. Sometimes I go as long as four or five months, but where I go through this period of time of almost rage. Like I, I, I literally feel like my neighbors, I mean, I know this isn't the case, but 
metaphorically, like my neighbors could show up at my door any time uh, with flashlights in the middle of the night, shining them through my window and making sure that I wasn't breaking the law. And if I was, that they'd be turning me into the police. Do you go through this? Did you go through this? Well, I just spent a few days with my father down south, and he is a Fox News viewer in his late 70s. Ooh. So how triggered do you think I am right now? I would say, especially if it's your dad. See, that's the hard thing. It's your dad. It's like your loins. You came from those loins. And 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 the pl- the loins from which you came from has Fox News flags and American flags sticking all out of it. That's got to hurt. Pretty did much, hit, yeah. Did I hit you too so, hard? One one of the things that that he said we, we were discussing uh, uh, licensing because uh, there's something going on on the TV show, and basically the the guy had to bribe somebody to get a liquor license, and there was a big long wait of like a year to get a liquor license or some crap like that or two years. And anyway, I'm like, why in the heck does somebody need a license to engage in commerce? And my dad says, because it's the law. And I'm like, uh, no. All that. Oh, no. I'm like, like, dad, that's not an argument. That's an appeal to authority. <laughs> also known as a logical fallacy. <laughs> Did his eyes glaze over and, did he spit I, tobacco I, at you? <laughs> no, he, he he doesn't use tobacco products anymore. anymore. Right? <laughs> yeah. I knew he, it. He, I knew it. He quit, knew he quit smoking round about the right before I started. Or no, right after I started. Yeah. And Larry Larry probably would like Larry Cousins. Hi, Larry. Worst human being, by the way, ever. Larry. Larry Hi, Larry. Cousins. Terrible human being. Uh he he would probably really get along with your dad. They would they would celebrate Waco. They'd be like, remember Waco? Yeah. Those were good times. <laughs> That's... My dad's not quite that bad. It, oh, he's not that bad. You, That's good. Now, a couple of years ago, he says, yeah, I'm getting a lot more libertarian in my old age. I'm like, dude, you're not even Wayne Allen Root yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that you're not, even, you're not even Bob Barr. <laughs> wow. He's not even Bob Barr? Right. Is he Gary Johnson? Or was no, he like think, reverse Jerry, I think, I think, Jerry I think Johnson? My dad, I think my dad knows where Lippo is. Maybe. Oh, he does? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Probably not. Like I said, the reverse Larry, or whatever his name is, that guy. That Jerry guy Johnson. that ran. That guy that ran. But this story to me shows, yeah, you have a small group of idiots. I don't know what the population of Rhode Island, you know, what is the freaking population of Rhode Island? Rhode Island's not much more than a county. Yeah, let me check uh, population. Rhode Island population, 1.05 million. So it's a 1 million. Still, 1 million people. That's a lot of people. Uh, You got a million people, a small group of people. Their their legislature is like 30 or 40 members or whatever. And these idiots are going to get together and they're going to presume that they have some sort of weird right that God knows doesn't exist to dictate to a million people what they should be doing with their computers. And the response from the million people is what? Shut up and take our freedom. (laughs) Yeah. I I mean, there may be some outrage. I'm I'm sure their version of outrage is you just wait till the next election buster where (laughs) we're going to come close to voting you out. I mean, we're not going to. But we're going to come close. We'll pick off a couple of you, but but not a lot. And the people we this pick you off election, with. This next election, I'm going to go into that booth, and I'm going to put my mark next to a different tyrant's name. I'll show you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, then, and, and then I'm going to throw that ballot in the box with the rest of them. Right. And I'm <laughs> right. like – yeah, you're, you're such a freedom fighter. <laughs> you're, you're, you're you're gonna you're gonna pick off a, a couple people and replace them with their clones. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're gonna do. And so even if you like, okay, just say you you pick off a couple of them and they and they end the porn tax, they'll be like, okay, that didn't work. How else can we can get revenue? <laughs> yeah, and it'll much. be something else. It's it's not gonna end. They never stop. They never relent. Yeah. They never rest. And and this leads me, I, w- I want to jump to the to the story that I told you I want to talk about that we don't have planned to talk about. Well, we're going to talk about it either way, so go ahead. Well, 
I mean, this isn't a democracy, you know, you know, so because uh, democracy is my rule. So I had uh, experience where my daughter, uh, her school is is one of many schools that uh, have experienced recently a threat, a threat against it. And I have noticed that this this is a. Uh, it's something that's going on across the nation. Like, it's, dare I call it an epidemic? I mean, I've seen, I see five or six news stories a day, and I'm not tracking everything and everywhere, but I'm tracking more than most people are. And I am seeing this epidemic of, of, these, of these school threats. So my question is, First off, have have you noticed this? This have you seen more of these stories recently? Not really. I, I I don't follow all this stuff that closely. I also don't have children, and if I did, they wouldn't be in the government indoctrination gulags. Yeah. Now my daughter is in a government indoctrination gulag because she has chosen to be in the indoctrination gulag. But the, w- what I'm seeing here is. I don't know. I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist. And you know, whenever anybody says that, guess what's coming? A conspiracy Google, Google, yeah. Google. <laughs> yeah. I, I am not sure if what I'm seeing is a form of, like, uh, what do you call it, uh, mass hypnosis kind of, where all of a sudden, or, or it's just become a trend. All these kids are picking up on it and say, hey, man, get attention, create drama, get out of school. Now all these kids are doing all these school threats. Or there's something else behind it or a combination of things. But I, I feel Math like... exams. I feel like it's a PSYOP. I feel like there are powers, such as they are. They're not omnipotent, not omniscient, but uh, they, they have real power. And that in some way, shape, or form, they're helping to manipulate this, this, this whipping up of fear. That they're, they're, they're actually orchestrating, uh, huh. I'm calling it, it, it's just psychological terrorism on these kids. And they're trying to get these kids to more aggressively and with tears in their eyes, go before cameras and... I know there's plenty of schools that plan on doing this dramatic march out to support the Florida victims, and and they say it's not political. Of course, it's political, dude. Did you march for the 15, 16 kids that were killed recently in a bombing by U.S. US, uh, weapons of mass destruction, of, of actual assault weapons? They didn't do that. You know, when, when somebody says something's not political, it's political. Right. So, yeah. all right. Now, l- let me address the whole conspiracy thing. Okay, now, I'm go not going to say I'm, I'm not going to say that it's not orchestrated, but I'm a firm believer in what's called Hanlon's razor. Do you know what that is? I know of Occam's razor, but I don't know about Hanlon's razor. Yeah, as you can see, I don't use any razors. But anyway, That's Hanlon's true. razor, Hanlon's razor goes like this. Never attribute to malice that which can be adequately explained with stupidity. So you think this is just a, a stupidity? You know, it's it, it's like Tide Pods. This is a Tide, another Tide Pod trend among kids. Yeah. Well, I mean, here, here's what you're looking at. Uh, I would not be. And I'm not going to say that there's not some. Uh, crazy central planner out there that has all these ideas of, oh, we're going to do this and and scare the hell out of people and, and everything else. Uh, but what it what's most likely is uh, when, when you have these things, when you have a, a threat called into a school, uh, for the most part, these threats are going to be investigated and they're going to act as if they are all real. So by acting as if the threats are real, they are incentivizing more people to provide threats because they're getting the reaction that they're looking for out of them. Does that it's make basic, sense? Yeah, it's basic market reality. You yeah. offer a so, product and somebody buys it. You offer another product same product yeah. somebody bought but be, it 
But be, if you're looking to disrupt things, like let's say, uh, let's say you're a student that did not study for the math exam, and the math exam is today, and you want to get out of it. Well, how do you get out of it? You do this, and and this is a perfect time to yeah. do it because there's so many of them. It's hard to track them all down. You have much less of a chance of getting caught up. Maybe, maybe, or maybe they'd assume that. I don't know. I. If you go back to 9-11, uh, there, uh, there's a, an, an old joke that uh, Bin Laden wanted to destroy the U.S., and what he did was he had his people fly planes into those buildings and wait for the aftermath. So what what actually caused the real problems? Was it the buildings coming down, or was it the U.S. military getting mired into a into a big giant cluster bleep over on the other side of the world for how many years has it been going on now 14 15 16 or 17 years something like that i don't know it, it, it's been a long time but you look at all the bureaucracy that go, got rolled out the, the the tsa was created and that's been a big giant mess I mean, that's Department, absolutely horrible De- department of homeland security which is it's it's Home, homeland safetyness yep which is essentially a domestic military designed to target mostly domestics. Yeah. It, it's the it's the American version of the Ministers for Staatssicherheit, which was the old East German Stasi, Ministry for State Security. Yep. So Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 much more the reaction than the actual act that does the damage. That's not always the case. I mean, if somebody drops a nuclear bomb on you it's it's the action, not the reaction that did you in. But uh, and certainly to the victims of nine one one, it was the action that did the damage. But to everyone else, yeah, it was the reaction. The, the long term, the long term, the long term destruction, the 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 greatest cost in freedom, in in money and in lives has come from the aftermath of the nine eleven attacks and the U.S. response. Yep. And the and the deficit debt and all that has just skyrocketed since. How many people have died, both Americans and God knows how many people died over there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, hundreds I mean, of thousands. How, how I don't you don't even know. My daughter asked me, says, "Well, how many how many people do you think the U.S. government killed last year?" I said, "I don't know." And one of the reasons I don't know is because the U.S. is always going to underreport the numbers, and. The targets are always going to overreport, so <laughs> I don't know. But I'll tell you this much: it's uh, well, I, I I won't say that. I I don't know the exact numbers, but uh, uh I don't know. I, I'm well, I'm what? I'm I'm a little bit like trying to find my way with this. Now I have a lot of emotional attachment to this because this is my daughter. So when you mm-hmm. get emotional, what happens immediately is your logic and your reason. They kind of they say, "Dude, I, I ain't even want to be a part of this." You get, you know what? You're not you're not fun to be around when you're like this, dude. <laughs> We're checking out for a while, but 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 I'm definitely having a visceral reaction to this. I I try to practice peaceful parenting with my daughter, uh, imperfectly. Uh, and what I'm struggling with this is this. And and you know, I know this is a show, but I'm glad you're here right now. Because I'm actually asking you this. I'm, I'm, I want your, if you have advice. I really don't like my daughter being in government school. And I really, I mean, she's 13. I feel like she's at an age where she's actually pretty decently informed. She's She's not stupid. She's very highly intelligent. She's probably more intelligent than I am. So I feel like she has, she's, she's not an unarmed. Uh, and, and I understand all the reasons that she wants to go to school, but I'm feeling like the efforts by the school to try to create another gov sheeple or gov zombie, as I'm calling them now, it's, it's only stepping up. And I, I, I list the school, and I, and I think you're probably right. I don't think there is a conspiracy. I think this is just like a tide, tide pod trend among kids. But but believe you, I mean it's, it's definitely. I'm see- now the other part of this is 
it, there might not be more reports of this actually going on. It might just be that the news media is is now focusing on these stories like they didn't do before, which is often the case. But either way, the school's reaction to this is to take as much advantage as they can to reinforce fear in my child. And this is what worries me. It's like my child is becoming a target of of psychological terrorism. So then my question is this. She's 13 years old. I feel like she has a, you know, I, I don't consider her adult, but but certainly I don't look at kids the way most people do. I think they have much more capability to act and reason and make their own decisions. But I feel like she's going to a place that's injecting her with cancer. And even though she knows it's cancer, she's going there. And so the question is, do I let my 13-year-old daughter go to a place that's injecting her with cancer? Tell me where I'm wrong. It's pretty deep. Hmm. You you have presented a definitely complicated situation there, Paul. And yeah. I I feel your pain. I trust me, I do. I, I, I feel your pain where you're coming from. And it's, it's a tough one. Uh, I would tell you right now that no, there's probably not a right answer. Uh, I, I think part of your feelings on, on the government school are, are based upon your feelings of government schools to begin with. So I oh, think, absolutely. I think, yeah, I think your I think your response is probably a little bit amplified. And I'm not disagreeing with you at all. Uh, one thing that I can tell you, and, and, and I, I agree with you that the that the government schools never let a crisis go to waste. It's I mean that's that's the rule of government. Well, that's the rule of anything. Because uh, I mean, when there's a if, if if there's a tragedy out there, you know that there's going the preppers are going to be saying, "Hey, look, you know, you need to be prepared for this if it happens to you." Or the insurance companies are going to say, "Who's going to take care of you if something happens?" and Quite frankly, the everything operates on fear in many regards. Yeah. So, uh, but because you're, and, yeah, I've met your daughter. We've had this you conversation, have, yes. the whole bunch of us, uh, because she wants to be around her friends and because she wants to go to the government school. I don't think it's because she wants to go to government school, but she wants to be around her friends and she wants to be, she wants to have that experience in her lifetime. She I, also I, likes the music program. They do have a good music program. Yeah. So what I suspect would happen if you asserted what's best for her is I suspect that she would probably be quite resentful of yeah, you I do, for doing I do that. Too. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I, I have little doubt that that would happen. So I I don't think that she would be like a like a like a pet that you could throw a couple strips of fried bacon to and all's forgiven. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. <laughs> that would be. So so, but but I tr tr I trust me. If you could solve problems with bacon, I'd be much more of an asshole than I already am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're mad at me? Here, have some bacon. Knock it off. Oh, me too. Me too. I would just <laughs> carry bacon with me because I'd know. I'm going to use it. I'm definitely going to use it. I'm going to take advantage. So, Hi, John. Yep, yep, John Smith. Hi, John. I'm not answering the comments here. We got, uh, let's see, Larry said, do I let her dose peace, peaceful parenting award here? You know, Larry, I'm not an absolutarian. I don't, there's not many things in my life that I'm like very rigid with. So, yeah, I'm. I'm not going to follow peaceful parenting to follow. I'm, I'm, I don't follow. I'm not part of the church of peaceful parenting. I think generally it's a great idea. And as much as I can, I try to follow it because I find it useful. And I think it's a practical way to uh, give my daughter at least a chance to choose a non coercive path, if you will. But yeah, I'm, if, if, <laughs> If, it, if if I ever felt like my daughter's safety, like really, really thought beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was my daughter's safety, I will violate the nap, okay? I'll do it. I'll do it. I will violate the nap if I feel like I'm protecting my daughter, even if it turns out I'm wrong in the end, but I will. And what I'm weighing here is, 
like like Lou said, like yeah, you know, I, I already have a jaundiced eye when it comes to school. So is it my jaundiced eye or am I seeing something real? Is there is there a legitimate reason for me to feel like she's going and being injected with cancer? Now I think more than likely she's not going to be injected with cancer. She's going to a place that is trying to convince her to say yes to be injected with cancer. And so far she says no. It's a carcinogenic environment. It, it, there's yeah. asbestos everywhere. There's asbestos everywhere, and most of the kids are eating it. <clears throat> she isn't eating it, I don't believe. And, but then, you know, that, that, that question is, you know, well, what if she is eating it? You know, I'm a Christian. I would love my daughter to be two things, a Christian, and I would love her to be, well, I'll just say I would love her to reject the coercive enterprise model. But I know if I were to, I don't work on my daughter to say, you, you really, you have to be a Christian. And I don't tell her that she has to, you know, reject the coercive enterprise. If I did that, then she really wouldn't be a Christian. She would be a Paulian. And uh, she wouldn't be rejecting the course of enterprise. She would just be a Paulian. I don't want her to be a Paulian. I want her to find her own way. So, you know, <laughs> I guess you could say I'm not trying to cram my religion and my beliefs down my daughter's throat. Although it's hard. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's extremely it difficult. Is, it is difficult to give up the, con the, the control freakiness of being a control freak. And I am uh, a control freak by yeah. nature. I mean, that's... I, if, if, you, you if probably had, gathered that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I knew that right from the beginning. It's one of the first things I figured out about you. <laughs> but <laughs> First show you ever did with me, right? You're like, holy moly. That oh, thing. no, no. I'm, talk, I'm talking about when we met on Facebook. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. That's... <laughs> but anyway, so. That's another story. I, if, if, if I was a parent, I would want my children to grow up to, to reject the course of enterprise. Um, and, and I would probably... Uh, I would probably present information that would be probably by is, is fair to say biased because I would be putting my, my own information out there, but I think I would like to hope that I would be honest enough to present other ideas and not just the, the single idea. Um, a, a little story. I was visiting some friends a few years ago and, uh, I was making up nachos and what I did was I, I ground up some some uh, pork sausage and mix it with uh, cheese and milk and all that other stuff. And Sounds good. Oh, it is good stuff. Get the get the jalapenos in there. I'm now distracted. There. Now everything else you say, it's just going to be white noise. But go ahead. Maybe, maybe I'll make maybe I'll make it at Liberty Fest. But anyway, uh, the little girl, uh, the my my friend's niece, she's I don't know five or six at the time, something like that. And uh, the the wife says to me, she says, uh, "Could you uh, could you put?" Could you not put uh, pork in uh, in the the girl's uh, uh, nacho cheese? I'm like, yeah, sure. What's up? Oh, she's Jewish. I'm like, oh, really? Did she pick that or right or what? Yes, because you, yeah. it, 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 I, I know her parents. I, I, I like her parents are good people. So you had some standing the, this whole, to say this to them. Yeah, okay. but the, but the thing is. Uh, so many people get their religions assigned to them like right. a like a high school guidance counselor. Here's your yes. guidance counselor. By the way, here's your religion. Right. And and it's so. not that your, your religion. Your here's your religion. Here's your political party. Here's, here's your, your football politics. team. Yeah. And as as a matter of fact, I, I remember hearing a quote. I don't know where I heard it from. I'm probably gonna butcher it, but I'm I'm gonna get the idea out. Uh, if if you're thirty or 40 years old and you still have the same political and religious beliefs say that you had when you were 10, 15 or 20, it means you've never had an original thought in your lifetime. I would say that can't, that's probably not absolutely true, but I would say maybe not. Well, of course not. You're, true. Not, you're, you're not an absolutarian. I'm not, I'm not an absolutarian. Actually I am. I'm an absolutarian in the sense that, I'm not an absolutarian, and I absolutely mean that. <laughs> <laughs> but but the but the thing is, how did you come? How do people come across these beliefs? Do they come across it by looking at other options, or do they come across it by, okay, this is what's going on, and there, therefore I will believe this because I was told to believe it. In which cases, it, I don't really think that it's safe to call it belief. I think it's more appropriate to call it programming. For well. 
and and but that's true. That's even true of people who are raised in atheist families. They become yeah. atheists because it, it, it's it's atheist. It's Islam. It's Christian. It's Philadelphia Eagles. It's the Democrat Party. It's whatever. It's most people. They inherit their tribes, and they keep them for life, and they don't critically think about it. In in my case, I I've been through a lot of tribes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A another story on religion. I used to go to this uh, discussion although group. Although I do want to say I, I have been an Eagles fan since 1977. That's probably the one tribe I've held on to since I was nine years old. You lack for personal growth. But anyway. <laughs> That's it. I was an atheist when I was nine, by the way. Really? Yep. I came hmm. to Christianity very late in life. Okay. We'll have to discuss that sometime. Not yeah. tonight, though. No. So I, I was I was a, I used to be involved kids. in this uh, I used to be involved in this re religious discussion group and it was mostly Christians there. Uh, I was the token non-believer. Uh, there were a couple Muslims there, uh, maybe even a couple Jews. Uh, and as a matter of fact, there was a a uh, Sikh that came out every once in a while. But anyway, as as we're discussing this stuff, uh, one of the guys who became a born again Christian. Uh, we're having the discussion of how he came about it, and and he had been a cop at the time and was drinking a lot, which is kind of common for cops. Uh, they they certainly wrestle with an awful lot of demons. Anyway, uh, he went to the he went to the local store in rural Ohio, uh, like a Walmart or something like that, and he saw a Bible there. He picked it up and he found his answers in there. So I don't know what his answers were, but. My question is, well, why did you grab the Bible and not the Quran or the Torah or was Dianetics or something? Well, no, it wasn't. It was rural Ohio. Yeah. You, know, you, you got your choice of uh, this well, Bible he, he, or that He Bible. obviously grew up where Christianity is one of the accepted beliefs. So yeah. there was certainly yeah. a safety in choosing that route. Yeah. So I asked him, you know, why, why, why not one of the other ones? You know, how was it that that Christianity was the answer, and he didn't really have an answer to that. So well, most, it's, most people don't have an answer for why a belief or non-belief is what it is. I, I would say 90%, 90 plus percent of people have not walked back. Now, I will say that, you know, even as hard as you try, I don't think you ever really truly fully get to the, to the core root of why you believe what you believe. But you can get a whole heck of a lot closer to uh, understanding why do you believe what you believe. E even if in the end you come to the conclusion is, I believe what I believe because it's useful. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. th that's, that's, that's something that's good to face. But for, for most people, we talked about this on the Freedom Fiends last week. The reality yeah. of power and standing on your preferences and how mythologies, uh, they... They keep you from understanding who and what you really are. Like, what what do you really, 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 really want? <laughs> and uh, and so the the mythology is your safe safety place, and you don't want to mess that up. You don't want to challenge that. You don't you don't you don't want to upset that boat because you're rocking in it and you're feeling safe. And you know, I guess I would say to you. Maybe most people are better off in that boat not rocking it. Maybe they can't handle outside the boat. I don't know. That's a question I've always had. I've wondered, you know, the degree to which, how, what, what is the degree to which intellect factors into the ability for someone to face uncertainty? Because it's a difficult road. It's, it, it was a difficult pl uh, place for me to allow myself to come to. I'm like, mm -hmm. really, it's only been the last few years that I've actually actually found comfort in actually being in uncertainty. And I don't I don't have much certainty in my life and I'm okay with that. But it took a long time to get there and I'm not sure I'm not sh I, I don't know. I don't want to sound elitist and, and this is like I'm not putting out something that I'm thinking I'm absolutely right about. I, I mean, I mean, if for you guys that are watching, I'd love to hear what you have to say. But what, what, if somebody who has an IQ of ninety, 
Maybe it's better than whatever boat they were born in. Maybe it's better for them to stay in that dang boat. Maybe maybe their life will be totally wrecked and ruined. They can't handle it. What do you say? Hmm. It's hard to say. I mean, but I uh, the statistics, I, the data, the, the, the whole facts. the whole certainty versus uncertainty thing. Uh, I have a meme, and I like to post it every once in a while. It's uh, it's a big giant lake, and in the background, there's these beautiful mountains, and I think there's a a guy standing on like a big boulder on the edge of the on the edge of the lake and it's it's a very peaceful serene setting and the caption is relax nothing is under control yeah and and that it's is a beautiful meme but it, it doesn't help in your day to day well when you understand the when you understand the meaning behind it uh, people have this this notion of uh, it's the control freakiness they want to be in control of everything but the reality is that so much of the things that impact our lives are completely out of our control. Now, I'm not just talking about what the politicians are going to do to you. I mean, there's a lot of things that are beyond your control. Your drive to work each day or the grocery store or wherever it is that you go. There's so much stuff out there that you have absolutely no control over. And once you accept the, the chaos that is the real world, this big giant ant farm that we live on, and you realize that the that the chaos isn't really so scary anymore. I, I find that there's a little bit of peace in that, at least for myself. That is right now. My question is: Yes, that's you, right, Jacob. Cha- chaos is a logical function. It is. It's necessary. Chaos is necessary for order. Uh, really, uh, too much order will bring you chaos anyway. Eventually, but. Uh, I mean, for me, when I, when I really, I haven't, I don't, I didn't feel the need to get very deep into stoicism. I got, I got what I, I believe I got what I needed from and what you're describing to me is, you know, the stoics approach. It's, there is, there is comfort in, for me, the comfort that I have is there's, there's absolute uncertainty. Like even for me and my faith, there's, there's. There's a lot of usefulness. My my faith aligns with me in a lot of ways. It it really, even you know the whole narrative. The the Christ is the, you know he's part of God. He came to earth and he was sacrificed. Uh, the, the the idea, the very idea of a Godhead that sent his son to you know sacrifice him from uh, himself for me. That's a narrative that that I can relate to. That uh, it. <laughs> I don't know how how do I word this. It's it's a story that whether it's true or not, I believe it's true, but I don't 100 percent know it's true. But what but whether it's true or not, the story offers guidance to me. It offers I I, I guess it gives me a small place to go to where there is certainty, even though I'm not certain of the certainty. <laughs> I don't know if it that gives makes you, sense. It gives you comfort. It it gives me comfort, and it's it's not a it's not something I'm dogmatic about so much anymore. But it's something that I I truly truly am, uh, appreciate. I I mean I love Christian music, and I get fully involved in it. And it's you know it's 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 like striper. a great love story. Not striper, that. not that, <laughs> not striper, but it's like a love story that you're part of. It's a great narrative, and 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 I and I'm okay with the uncertainty surrounding it. But even for me in my Christian faith, I, you know, I have to be honest about you. You look at Scripture, and how many people really understand the history of Scripture, where it comes from, and the uncertainty involved in it, and you know, we we have. We have different. We have the Eastern Orthodox and the Catholics, and they have books in the Old Testament that the Protestants don't have. And you know, I've looked into these things, and I've kept trying to find certainty, like why these books, why not these books. And you know, I've never found a, a definitive answer, and and I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay with the uncertainty. I'm okay with the parts in the Bible, for instance, that I read, and I scratch my head. And I'm going, I don't even know. I don't even get that. Okay. 
Well, that part, Re I'm not rejecting it. I don't reject any of the Bible. But the parts that I don't understand that gets me to scratch my head, I'm not building a life or a belief or a practice around those parts because I just, I don't know. I'm not touching it. Uh, one of the one of the things I find that's really amazing is all these people that are that are just dead certain, dead, just as sure as we're sitting here having this conversation right now. They are so certain that their beliefs are correct and indisputable, and they were fortunate enough to find the truth on the first try. Uh, yes, <laughs> and it just hi seems, Sarah and. Oh, oh, Sarah. I see. Hi, Sarah. Sarah joined in. And By the way, the, the, the TSA gave me shit over that soap that you made for me. That they, figures. They were, they, they were snooping around it and looking that at figures. it. Oh, my God. The TSA has ruined flying. Good good transition. Good. Yeah. You, like, pulled a Michael. <laughs> yeah. So, was, a, after, having, after having this warm, fuzzy, deep thoughts, I just go into the TSA sucks ass. Yeah, good, so. good, good, good. <laughs> good segue but, i ruined it i ruined it but no it's 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 cool uh you know uh yeah everything that i've ever looked at in my life and tried to find a certain answer for the more i mean it's it, it's before i began my quest i was more certain after i went through it i was less certain and this is this is everything across the board I went through a period of time even in my faith where I was looking at all the different Christian denominations and beliefs, and I was like, I'm going to settle the answers. Predestination or free will. I'm going to nail this down. And I, and I just couldn't honestly say predestination or free will. I can't say. They both got good cases to me. I, I mean, I kind of lean predestination. I don't know, but <laughs> I don't know. Every, everything that I investigate, I end up saying, to varying degrees, some way more than others, I don't know. I just I just don't know. But then there's this Stoics approach, which I'm, I'm working it back. I kind of lost the trail there. And the Stoics approach is, and this is how I approach my faith. This is how I approach my understanding of, of human governance. This is how I approach everything even what I'm doing with iState, like how I'm trying to do the, the iState site, uh, I understand and recognize that uh, there are so many things beyond my control as far as knowing. Like even my mind. My mind is limited. I only have an IQ that's so high. I'm not the smartest person in the world. I don't have photographic memory. I, I forget things that I read three days ago. So I totally understand. Our, uh, and and I and I mis misremember things. I've experienced that, so I know what I have in my head. I can't one hundred percent be sure is true, but yet the Stoics approach is the parts of your life that are in front of you that you, that's actually there to the best of. It doesn't even have to be true, but to the best of your knowledge, this is a part that you can control. This is a part that you can understand. You act with excellence within that area. And it's and it's not, if you really follow the Stoics approach fully, it's not the end result that matters. What matters is what did you do in that sphere? Because the success, it doesn't fully rely on you, although in some some, some areas it relies more on you than others. If, if, if you act with excellence and you fail, but you know you acted with excellence, to the best of your ability to know that you've, you've still experienced, you've, you've had a good journey. That part of your life was a good journey. That, that was one you could put in the good journey bank. And that, do you, that, that gives me a lot of comfort. Do you think that ties into uh, the serenity prayer prayer? Grant me the serenity to the, the, the wisdom to, or the, and the wisdom to the know courage the to change the courage to change the, the stuff I can, the wisdom to leave it alone and the, the cunning to get rid of the bodies. I don't know. Something like that. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but you know what I'm talking about. I do. I do. I knew I, I, I do. And it's a, uh, you know, God grant me the, you know what? I'm going to find it. I don't want to just leave the studio audience here, uh, hanging. Uh, I won't say all versions of Christianity, but certainly the versions that I'm more drawn to 
Stoicism and Christianity are a very good mix, and there's a fair number of Christian Stoics, and I, I would consider myself one of those. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Now, that's the part that you always see. Now, there's another part here that I'm seeing here, which uh, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hard. I, I don't care about that part. I'm not going to read the second part. You look it up for yourself. I only really care about, oh, this is interesting. It is written. I didn't realize it's written by Reinhold Niebuhr. Now, if I'm right about this guy, let me just double check this. I believe that this was a German, uh, an American theologian. Okay, he's an American Never mind. He's not who I thought he was. All right. Never mind. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, uh, certain versions of Christianity, if you will, and and Stoicism totally line up. It's like why uh, Job chapter, I think it's chapter 27. If it's not, it's like right in that area. Uh, it's one of my favorite chapters in all the Bible. Uh, Job is going before God is like, I mean, that's a hard book to read <laughs> and still be a Christian. It's a really hard book to read. Uh, and I actually love the book, and it actually really reinforces my faith. But in that chapter, Job is, is uh, he's, he's talking to his friends that are really just trying to say, Job, you're suffering all these hardships because of your sins. And Job is like, dude, that's not it. And they're asking him, you know, you got you to gotta go before God. You got to ask questions. And at one point he says, listen, man, and he gives him this, he gives him this, I guess, a parable. It's really a poem. Uh, and he talks about how the humans, they go into the mountains and they dig the, the raw jewels out of the mountains. They go into the dark places to get the raw jewels and they pull them out. And the animals, all they see is the beautiful jewels. That's it. They have they can't even comprehend. There's no way for them to understand where these jewels actually came from and the process it took to bring those jewels out. Uh, and he says, "This is this is what God's truth is. God God is God is us. God 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 is the one that goes into the mountains, into the dark places, and pulls out this truth. And what we see, we see the jewels. What well, we can never we can never see the full." the fullness of it, and he's comforted in that, and he accepts that. He accepts the limitations of his own understanding. This is perfectly aligned with Stoicism, when you say. It sounds like it. You should, you should read the chapter. It's really interesting. It's a beautiful chapter. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's one of those chapters that you don't have to be a Christian to appreciate. <clears throat> There, there are a few. Well, send me the link. Send me the link when you get a chance. Oh, um, well. It's it's almost nine o'clock. Yeah. Are we going to move on to some other stories here? <laughs> yeah, why not? Are you anxious to get to a certain story? Is there one you want to get to? No, no. I'm just trying to keep us on track. I, we don't want to do a two hour show. I'm, or do we? I, I do what I do, <laughs> man. I, I, I don't. I don't. I mean, you know, you plan a show and then you let what happen happens. And that's kind of my approach. I don't know if that if you like that, but that's how I like to do it. I like to, I like, I, I, you know, in a way, the way that I do shows is kind of the way I try to live my life. I plan, and then I accept that my plan can change because I know <laughs> there are things beyond my control. But there's a comfort in planning. I like going into a show knowing, hey, if we follow this, I got stuff, we're set, we're good. But if, you know, as we often do, which is fine. I mean, if every show that we do for the next hundred shows is like this, I'd be fine with that. Oh, it's a fine show. I'm, I'm enjoying it immensely, but I do try to stay a little bit on topic, a uh, tiny bit, sort of maybe a little. <laughs> so what you're saying is that you're a slightly more control freak than I am. When it comes to shows. Yes. <laughs> Interestingly okay. enough, this isn't even the I ponder topic, but we pondered. Yeah, we we got into the pondering. I don't know how he actually got there. Actually, I, I'm honestly, I'm I'm feeling kind of weird tonight. That's probably you, why. I'm I'm. You laid down on my couch, and <laughs> I had, I asked you about. Your, I asked you to share what you were feeling. Show me on the doll. 
Show me on the doll where, where your daughter's school touched you. Yes, yes, it 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 really did. Well, what, why don't we why don't we get to the uh, let, let's just do the I ponder one. What do you say? Okay, uh, you don't want to cover the air stories though. Is there one reach. that you really want to cover? Uh, I ain't not, I'm I'm easy. We know this. Uh, you can yeah, read you about are. that on the internet. Oh, you're very easy. Oh, you're very easy. I I I yeah. I, I th- why don't why don't we do the actual Fed infiltrates anarchist group? I think okay. that would be an interesting discussion because because it it actually happened. <laughs> so this is you know what I'm going to call this I'm going to call this the the off the leash segment even though what the heck so I can play the off the leash bump. Okay, are you ready? Okay, where is it? Where's the freaking off the leash bump? There it is. Prepare yourselves. We're going off the leash, sort of. Well, we're going to make this off the leash. We're going to do woof, it. Woof, woof, woof! How are others enjoying lives that exist beyond the reach of the leash of the state, the government, the course of enterprise, the course of association? How, in other words, are people living off the leash, and how might you join them? So this is... Uh, I mean, everybody, I'm sure, Lou, you've had to have been accused of being a Fed uh, at least once in your in your journeys in libertopia right no i don't think i have yet holy moly wow well i've been accused of being a fed i've know a number of people who've been accused of being a fed and i've heard a lot of people accuse a lot of people of being a fed it's it's you know you're a cuck you're an sjw you're a fed i'm still a nobody you're still a so, nobody? Is that what they yeah, call there's you? An old, there's an old phrase. You're, you're nobody in the Liberty community until you get called a Fed. So I'm wow. still a nobody. Well, then I'm somebody, which in the Liberty community is still nobody. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's like 10 yeah, people in make, the Liberty community. If one person is noticed, yeah. Kind of so, makes you a cuck. <laughs> no, it, it, pretty it, much. It makes, it makes you SJW the tallest midget, cuck. The, the tallest midget in the circus. Yeah. Yeah. So so anyway, I've I've had that distinction of of being called a Fed, uh, or or shill. Shill's another one, but I'm not going to cover shill in this one. So whatever you feel, oh, ab- as as an anarchist, I'm a shill for the new world order and global government. Well, yeah, <laughs> that, that I, I, th- I think I think that was written in all caps, by the way. Oh, was it? Was it? Yeah, I bet you, Larry said, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Oh, Larry didn't say anything. I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> uh, 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 Jacob, Embrace Jacob said a couple of things. I'm going to, I'm going to cover real quick a couple of things. J- Jacob says the Christian Bible is two thirds statism. The remainder is half psycho- psychopathy and BS and just a bit inspired. I, I have a different view, but uh, that's interesting. And then we have uh, Jacob says two hour show. Larry says embrace the Fed. Of course he does. That you know what I was right. <laughs> uh, uh, Jacob adds, "Quick, somebody call me a Fed." Jacob, Jacob, you're a Jacob's Fed. A fed. He's, He's a total a fed. fed. Yeah. And Sarah pointed fed. out, like, like the Aaron Bennett thing. Yes, exactly, the Aaron Bennett thing. Exactly. Aaron Bennett gets called a Fed all the time. He's not my favorite person. I don't know whether he's a Fed or not, but I really don't care to go down that rabbit trail. Uh, but. Whatever you feel about the protests that happened, you know, the Disrupt J20, the, uh, you know, where the so-called anarchists went out and they, they, did, they, they did brutal things to trash cans. I think they did also torch a limousine, which if actually the limousine belonged to, uh, it was a, it was an immigrant. It was a, it was a an Arab immigrant, I believe. I don't think it was a Muslim. I'm not sure, but he was an Arab immigrant. What medal so, does he get in the Victim Olympics? Well, he was a chauffeur for a Christian, so no medals. He was a chauffeur for. But wasn't he a Muslim? No, he wasn't. I don't think. Uh, so, I, I'm not so sure, he's, but I don't, so he's not. So he's not being oppressed by the Christian. No, 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 okay. no. He was. He was. He was taking the Christian somewhere. But, but he is an immigrant. He is an immigrant, so there's some points 
Yeah. So anyway, how many, vic- how many victim points? So one one thing that I do want to throw in here is uh, I, I really hate when these economically illiterate but hurt socialists get called anarchists. I know that's that's why I said you know I put it in quotes anarchist. I did that. These are the headlines. But I mean, I'm assuming you read the story and you understand the the angle that I'm taking with the story. It's not so much yeah. about them. Mm-hmm. What what it's what it's about is what you what you have in I would say in groups in which you're doing stuff that the government may not like what you're doing, and if you're listening to this show right now, whether it's you're listening live or the YouTube version or the archive version on Facebook or the audio version. There's a fairly decent chance that you may be involved in one of these groups directly and or indirectly, willingly or otherwise. I don't know. Uh, and and what happens in these groups, like I just described earlier, is everybody – I mean the accusation of Fed is, is pretty thick. And often the people that get accused of being a Fed are the disruptors. They're the ones – that they're always making trouble. They're always saying things that ticks people off. And there's usually one of two reasons why there's somebody in your group that's saying the stuff that's ticking you off. One, they're a Jerkenstein, or two, they're an actual truth plumb line, plumb line that likes to question and, and likes to even question things that are like holy sacred text within your group. And it's often hard to tell the difference. Not Sometimes you can, but it's often hard to t- tell the difference. But so when you see these people, you immediately start thinking they're a Fed, and wow, man, they're coming in, they're disrupting things, and and I think yeah, sometimes Feds may actually be sent into groups to bust them up. But I think more than likely, <clears throat> unless your group is on the verge of doing something amazing, and I just want to say that Anarchotopia, the numbers are small. I doubt that Anarchotopia is doing something amazing. Unless you're involved in crypto anarchy, then maybe you're doing some amazing stuff. But outside of that, uh, more than likely, they're there to gather information. And that's just what happened here in this story. So this anarchist group was apparently infiltrated by an actual fed. And the thing is, this fed wasn't... uh, was was wasn't a disruptor wasn't you know uh making waves and causing tension and drama this this anarchist was 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 most likely you know one of the good ones you know rolled along and uh you know and and their goal would be to work as high as they can towards the the inner secret room if if your group has such a thing not that anarchists have inner secret rooms but yeah, so these guys might, because these guys are much more. I'm going to say status leaning. I'll just say that. <laughs> they, yeah, they they're, have, they're 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 uh, how can I put it? They're very they're, they're very anarchist, except for when they want the government to enforce their minimum wage and and labor laws. Yeah, and and, and say where you and I will disagree is among these groups, there there actually was no one group, but I think the. Well, obviously, the group, there, this one group, this anarch, this Fed anarchist was in. Uh, uh, yeah, that's just that one group. But there was a lot of groups in, 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 that were taking action that day, and not all of them were calling on the federal government to, you know, pass minimum wage. Some were, many were, but but not all of them. Not all left-leaning anarchists are, are invoking the state. I'll just say that. I'll just leave it at that, Lou. I'll just leave it at that. I know you're probably warming up the helicopter for me. I've been called a commie before. <laughs> By the way, that's another one. Have you ever been called a commie? Well, yeah, I'm sure you have. You've been called yeah, a commie. Yeah, but, but it was by a Republican, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. I get called a commie by the Republicans all the time. You know the drill. You know, you. <laughs> You know the drill. You 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 walk into a story, and which the Republicans are going on about my immigrations and round them up, and and you're like, dude, this might not be such a cool thing. Maybe they're human beings. Maybe you should just treat them like human beings. You're a commie, 
And then, you know, the progs with their hate speech stuff, and you wander into that, and you're like, dude, are you that much afraid of competition? You you know, you, you can't rest on the merits of your ideas. you got to use thuggery to try to shut people up. Then you're a Nazi. So I've gone back and forth between commie and Nazi. But I... I I, I I think the moral of this story is stop looking for feds. Most likely, it, you're not going to know who the fed is. Go ahead. Interestingly enough, and I've, I've had this conversation for, with a number of people, uh, libertarians have a tendency to, to be more on the paranoid side, uh, particularly the ones that move towards anarchism. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I made a meme. It was uh, Weird Al Yankovic wearing the tinfoil hat, and the 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 comment on there was, 30 minutes after you become a libertarian and you think every hot chick friend request is a federal agent. <laughs> and I see that, by the way. I see that all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Who's er, this er, fed? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who's this fed? Probably uh, oh, someone fed selling fed. porn. Yeah. And the the thing about it is... Uh, as, as I mentioned, a lot of libertarians tend towards uh, paranoia in certain regards. And you, that's also why you'll see uh, a large number of conspiracy theorists in the libertarian community, too. Uh, so like the 9-11 truthers, the account trailers, and, and other stuff. Uh, but the, the thing about it is, is when, when, uh, when people get this paranoia going, uh, particularly if you're a libertarian or anarchist, uh, a lot of it is based upon a guilty knowledge that you have. And what that means, and, and if, if, if you talk to cops about this, not that I recommend talking to cops, but <laughs> when, when they, when they are people interrogating too. people, when, when they're interrogating people, they act as if they have knowledge that they don't. The suspect assumes that they have knowledge that they don't. And the reason that the suspect assumes that they have this knowledge is because they have the the guilty knowledge themselves or, or mens rea, the guilty mind. Uh, so what they do is they project that other people know what they know. And, uh, and unless, they can, unless they can get a grip on things and say, you know what, how in the heck are they actually going to know this? How are they going to know that I did that? Nobody else was around. I only did it an hour ago. There's been absolutely no effects. Uh, there were no video cameras, no cell phones, nothing like that. How on earth are they going to know? As a matter of fact, I didn't even do it. I thought about it. So how are they going to know that I thought it? And once you get a grip on that, uh, it's, a, it's a lot easier to function. But with with people getting this, this notion that, oh, I'm doing – things that the government thinks is naughty. Therefore, they're going to be looking at me. Well, I, quite frankly, most of us are, uh, we don't even rate high enough for monitoring our Facebooks. I mean, to be honest with you, it's, it's. Yeah, I, I will add, you know, Jacob says here, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after it. It, 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 it right. It doesn't, but I'll say, you know, and really in, in the, in the Stoics approach, I mean, it's good to be prudent. It's good not to be an idiot and make right. things easy for your enemies. But if you're but, living but in what fear. Many, but what many people do is they assume that the the authorities have knowledge that they don't actually have and that they couldn't possibly have. They give them omniscient, omnipresent. Yeah, all that kind of power they attribute it, to them. They feel like they're everywhere all at once and they know everything. Yeah. And, and that's not the case. And quite frankly, uh, they're, they're looking at, how could I put it? Uh, when they prioritize who they're going to investigate, uh, most of us are nowhere near the top of the priority list. Yeah. But again, now if you're in crypto anarchy, yeah, you, you probably, you you want to be a lot more carefully, a whole lot more carefully, uh, or careful. But un unless you're into some really really hardcore cutting edge kind of stuff, you don't rate folks. Uh, and it Sc doesn't mean screen it doesn't cap mean, the conversation. Larry says I'm correct. I know. Holy moly, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it it doesn't mean that there isn't a chance because I do believe sometimes they do like to pick. Yeah, pick pick someone at random that maybe isn't a big fish, just just to kind of you know, like hey, we're watching. They're really not. 
But you know, a little example now and then, and you could fall victim to that. It's highly unlikely, like remotely unlikely, like getting struck by lightning twice in one day, kind of likely. But, you know, our show starts off with uh, fear is the mind killer. And so, yeah. Go ahead. And, and that's, 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 that's the interesting point. Yeah. It's, it's true that they might stumble upon you on accident and, and maybe you are doing something that's naughty, but what you just said, fear is a mind killer. I was looking for it when you were talking a little while ago and it was an interview done with Carl Hess. And I think it was a discussion with him and somebody else. And I remember hearing about it from Ben Stone, the bad Quaker on his podcast, badquaker.com. Uh, yeah, I went there looking for the link and I also did the YouTube search, but Carl Hess and somebody else were having a discussion. And one of the things that, that they determined was the fear of infiltrators or infiltration from law enforcement was as powerful as when it comes to disrupting organizations and groups and things like that, it was as powerful as actual infiltration. I have no doubt. You know, you, you, all you got to do is you, you judge a person by their actions. And you know that you don't have perfect knowledge, so you can't tell who who is what. And somebody could be just seem like, well, if they seem perfect, that's probably a flag in and of itself. But uh, but I don't know if it's a flag you're necessarily going to act on. But if if someone is being, for instance, disrupting, and they're constantly getting away in the way of your group actually doing what you guys really want to do, if you're spending all your time getting in arguments because of the same person, then you don't have to worry about whether they're fed or not. You're just like, dude, this isn't working with you here. Bye. Bye, Felicia. That's it. You don't have to worry mm -hmm. about it. You, you don't have to go down the fed rabbit trail. You, you, you know, if, you know, actually I will say this is how this is off the leash. Being off the leash means you, you don't live in fear of feds. I'm, and again, that doesn't mean that, that you're not, you know, you don't want to make it easy for people. You don't want to just, you know, put the welcome mat and said, here I am. But <laughs> You you can't you can't live your life under the mythological power of the state and actually start to effectively build I'll use the word liberty for lack of a better word, liberty for yourself, where you're at and and with the people that you're associating with. You you, you just can't worry about the things that you can't control. And there is a mm -hmm. chance that there's a Fed in your group. It could be your best friend. Could be. But you, but you just, can't act under that. But just remember, if you're not doing anything wrong, you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But even if you are doing something right, you you might actually have something. But the, but the but the point is, the chance that your group is being infiltrated by a Fed is is pretty slim. I mean, it could be. I'm not, I don't want to rule it out. But but again, yep. it's like it's like you know what? It's kind of like with the school shootings. You know, there's been. Uh, by the by, the clinical whatever terminology they're using, there's actually been like eight school shootings since 1996, something like that. Really, really, really low number. Where I think it's uh, the definition is four more people died, and they were intentionally targeted. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't like a momentary act of rage. It was like somebody came there with the intent to kill as many people as possible. It's been four uh, school shootings, and and I mean, you know high school and lower levels only four only eight and yet from that they're 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 proposing to redesign the entire universe so yeah mm -hmm. school shooting might happen it might which, which maybe maybe this maybe this should be a, our i ponder for next week uh but when you point out the how little these occurrences are and everything that's being done about it um I, I guess the topic would be: Should all problems be solved, or should should there be an attempt to solve all problems? Well, what did you talk about? The the towers came down. Horrible! I cried. Still, mm -hmm. when I think about it, it was really traumatic. And and you know, it's traumatic because I felt a connection to these folks because they're part of my tribe. I'll be, I'll be honest. I mean. Uh, but the cure was worse than the disease. 
Yep. And that's uh, going, going, what happens when you're fed paranoid. The cure is worse than the disease. The disease being uh, a fed actually infiltrating and the cure being the ridiculous steps you'll take to try to protect yourself from the feds. And the ridiculous steps you'll take will pretty much render your group <laughs> not a threat. <laughs> I'll just so say that. I, I I want I want to do a little promotion here. Uh, and you just hit on something I had mentioned it earlier. The fear of infiltration is as bad as the actual infiltration in the way that it will paralyze groups. So if you are concerned about infiltrators, there's a free ebook from OG Libertarian called uh, Claire Wolf called Rats: Your Guide to Protecting Yourself Against Snitches, Informers, and Other Vermin. And you can find it at rats-nosnitch.com. There's also a copy of it on copblock.org. Uh, so oh, that, a lot of that places. Site still exists. Ratsnosnitch.com. Does no, copblock.org no still exists? Uh, I think so. But if you do a Google search for rats, Claire Wolf. Oh, wow. You can't post this because it has a blocked link. The content you're trying to share includes a link that our security systems detected to be unsafe, no snitch.com. Wait, I'm, I'm, uh, that's, that's a real thing. Hold on. What, on Facebook? Yeah. Let me just see. I'll try this again because I want to get the, uh, I should have. Are you putting out, are you putting it on Facebook? Yeah. Okay, here it is. Hold on. Let me go. I hope I, I think I have the website version. Here we go. There you guys can see it there. The content you're trying to share includes a link that our security system detected to be unsafe. And there it is, nosnitch.com. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boy, Rats. well, that's you're, not... You're, your guide <laughs> to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, <laughs> informants, agents, provocateurs, narcs, finks, oh. and similar vermin. I love that. <laughs> so... So here we are. We're like, hey, everybody, don't be paranoid, man. Don't be ridiculous. Don't be paranoid. <laughs> and then this happens. <laughs> I'm going to try to go to the site now. Let me let me try to go to the site. That's so funny. Uh, I was just on the site. Oh, it, it looks like it's just a directory. Actually, there might be. This might have been you could, taken you over. Could down, you could download the PDFs. Where uh, free snitch live? Oh, PDF. Oh, never mind. Oh, I get it. This is disguised cleverly as just an innocuous directory site. So let me let me see this. Hold on. So go to the site and you click on PDF. Let's see. Download PDF. Download. No, no, no. This doesn't. This goes to sponsored listings. I don't know what happened here. Let me go to rats. Dot no snitch. Dash no snitch. Dat what what is it? Rats dash no snitch. Oh rats dash no snitch. So oh, okay. Oh rats. Oh never mind. I'm gonna get this dude. I'm gonna get this. So wow wow well, there it is. Okay uh. I, I put rats dot no snitch dot com. So 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 no 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 conspiracy folks. None what's you know, that's a perfect example. I just, I just posted it in the show page. Oh. And I just posted it in the comments here. Yeah, uh, I just posted it in the comments too. Of oh, the show. Okay. <laughs> of the show that we're doing right now. So yeah, I did too, so it's there twice. So I mean you, you but I mean, you think of it's perfect. At, I mean, that is a perfect example right there where, okay, I entered the wrong email, the wrong URL, but I didn't know it. But because of the topic, it's like, wow, this is so weird. Conspiracy. No, no, it was politicy. Politicy? It was politicy, <laughs> which is ne another word never, for Paul idiocy. Never attribute, never attribute to malice <laughs> that which can be adequately explained with Paul being... An idiot. An idiot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was, I mean, you think about it. That was a perfect 
off the leash segment right there. We were, you know what? We orchestrated this in advance. I'm not that stupid. We did this in advance. We set this up. No, because that, because that would mean central planning could work. Actually, what <laughs> That's true. actually what this is, this magic that you and I do every single Thursday night <laughs> is the result of a spontaneous order. I was just going to say that. This folks is what spontaneous order looks like. You Read your it. script properly. This is spontaneous order. <laughs> well, you have you have an outline and then you just let it grow of its own accord and that's that's what we do here i think we're about ready to, we, we can wrap the show up now what do you say do we want to go to a longer leash and off the leash or <laughs> no no well we, this was off the leash even though it was i ponder it ended up being off the leash is there some particular story that you wanted to cover that we did no i'm good bro okay we're good so i want to thank everybody for joining us here on is Daily Thursday? That's this is a Daily Thursday, right? Yes. And by the way, you can find all of the shows on iTunes and Stitcher. And if if you like all the shows, subscribe to Is Daily. But if there's like maybe you like Is Daily Thursday and you don't like the other shows, then just subscribe to Is Daily Thursday. That's available as well. All of these shows have their own individual feeds. So, so I did that. They all have their own show, show pages. And you could, I'm going to, hopefully by next week, I'll have new graphics added so you can see it uh, during the show. You'll see it various times. They all have their own subdomain URL that just points to their show pages. So this is thurs.isdaily.live. If you go to thurs.isdaily.live, you get this show page, which has information about the show and the latest show and all that and all the latest show notes and everything. So, and you can bookmark that and that's that. Do you have anything else I'm you want to say? Fan of, I'm a big fan of the Thursday night show. Is it your favorite? It's my favorite. I love it. You know me, for me, the favorite show that I have is the one that I'm on. I like that one the best. That's all of them. You get the joke. Okay. He he didn't get it. He was like, "Which one is that?" <laughs> Confess, you were thinking. No, I know he wasn't. I'm just kidding. Anyway, rats dash no snitch dot com. Rats dash your, no. Sorry. Your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents, provocateurs, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Hey, and while rats, we're at it, we should. Oh, you're not rats. Done. Dash no snitch dot com. <laughs> We're just gonna spend the next hour listening to Lou's sell rats dot no snitch dash rats dash no snitch dot com. And also listening uh, to Lou sell this free PDF download. Yes. Well it's selling it's selling time. You're selling time and and bandwidth because it'll take some bandwidth to download it and they'll spend some time reading it. So you're selling time and bandwidth. Nothing is free, dude. Are you actually saying something is free? Nothing is free. This isn't free. This requires an investment on your part. Not a monetary investment, but a bandwidth investment, which is monetary. Okay, it's a monetary investment and a time investment and maybe maybe even a heart investment. And while we're at it, why don't we uh, uh why don't you tell people about cell 411? I mean, why the heck not? Cell 411 and you can get that at getcell411.com is a uh, it's it's a telephone app and it replaces the other group of of uh, finks and farmers and other vermin. No, it's a uh, it, it it's a great way for you to create a, a local network with your friends, family, neighbors, and provide assistance as necessary without having the the long wait time or the risk of calling cops. Uh, as an example, if somebody in your neighborhood is a medical provider of some sorts, uh, they might be a good person to call in the event of a medical emergency while you're waiting on the ambulance or somebody else to get there. If uh, if you have if you have somebody breaking in your house rather than waiting an hour or so for the cops to come draw a chalk outline around your cool carcass, uh, you could call your neighbors over and say, hey, I'm being attacked. Somebody's trying to break in, and they could probably respond a lot quicker and not shoot your dog. And also, if you know where the crack addicts are, or the crack dealers, crack crackheads, 
Yeah, call crackheads. a crackhead. If you know where the crackheads are, make sure they're in your network because, you know, call a crackhead. <laughs> yep. You can you can do it. Also, Cell 411 has a ride-sharing feature as well, right? So uh, you can actually uh, you can get rides from people and you can pay them however you would like to pay them. And Cell 411 doesn't take a cut. I remember that. I remember that part. I did that. I did this. I don't know. I think we're done. I, th- I feel and sleepy now. W- one more thing about Cell 411. Uh, very nice thing about it is you can uh, you can stream video and it will go to the Cell 411 servers. That way you don't have to worry about uh, criminals with badges taking away your phone and deleting your video footage because it goes to the servers on Cell 411. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. I won't repeat Larry's comments because Larry oh, is I'm, I'm, literally I'm, the worst human being on the face I'm, of the I'm lo- planet. I'm, lo- I'm looking at his comments. He's, and he's a darling. You're a darling, Larry. I love you. Yeah. You, you, you know, know what? what? There, there, there's, there's something for – there's a instructional thing that we can cover on iPonders called how to block somebody that's being an asshole on your page. <laughs> We should do like a video tutorial for that. Yes, uh, a video tutorial exactly. Yes, yes, we 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 could do that. So I'm 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 gonna play us out, which is really there is no playing out music or anything. It's just me saying thank you everybody for joining us here on Is Daily Thursday, uh, Friday. There are no shows. There's no headlines you may have missed tomorrow, and there is no. Uh, is daily. There's no is daily Friday. There is. It doesn't exist. And sometimes I may. I don't know if I will tomorrow or not. But sometimes I do an Arc Logos podcast, and those Arc Logos is like totally. It just happens. And I have I have notes for an Arc Logo show in, in the works. Which who knows? Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Maybe I not. I won't. Maybe I'll do it Saturday. And 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 that shows about. Uh, it's actually about the limitation of words. Yeah, that's that's the theme. It's going to be exciting if, if I do it uh, uh, Friday or Saturday. If not, I'll see you guys next Monday. We will be back with his daily Monday. As it so happened, the last two Mondays, uh, there have been, let, let's see, the, the Monday before that, I had, a, I had a contract job that I had to take that was worth... Uh, fair amount of money that I had to do so there was no is daily Monday then and then last week my computer didn't work <laughs> on that day so there was no is daily Monday last week but this Monday we are going to do the much talked about show uh why does the FBI hate cops that's that's what's in the works and headlines you may have missed will be back and of course next Thursday uh, I will be back here with uh, Lou Sander for Is Daily Thursday. And I do want to give a heads up. And I'll give the heads up to you, Lou. I think I forgot to say this to Niz yesterday. But April 1st through the 8th is my sabbatical week. So there will be no shows that week. I am I, I kind of practiced the Eastern. I'm not Eastern Orthodox, but I follow the Eastern Orthodox calendar for when the, the Passover Passion Week is. And I and I also take that week as a time to do little reflections and it's my reflection time that I take. I do that. I have two times I do that. Christmas week and Passion Week. They do it twice a year. So I'll be doing it then. And with that, do you have any last notes before I, I shut down this lemon stand? Uh no, I think I'm good. All right. Thank you, Lou, once again. Without you, there is no Is Daily Thursday, so it's good that you're here. Good night, everybody.